Hello and welcome to this 2014-2015 season premiere edition of A B to Z, our 15th year on the air. I'm Calvin Sullivan. And I'm Ben Murphy. Here's what's happening this week around the A B community. Do you like small food and great music? Then the High School Friends of Music has the perfect event for you. On Friday, October 17th, the new group is putting on a new and exciting event called Tunes and Tapas. It will take place at the Wedgwood Pines Country Club in Stowe. Tickets are $25 a pop and available online at abfom.org. Tickets will not be sold at the door, so buy one before it's too late. In just a few weeks, the High School National Honor Society, in conjunction with some social studies classes, will hold its second annual Veterans Day breakfast. This event is taking place on Tuesday, November 11th at the Holiday Inn in Boxborough. Last year, the turnout was fantastic, as over 100 AB students came together to host and honor over 200 local veterans. This year, the turnout is expected to be double that number. We spoke to event organizer and high school history teacher, Mrs. Maddox, and asked her more about the event. Uh, so what's the background on the event? Um, I have to say this is one of the neatest things I've been a part of in the 10 plus years I've been at AB. Um, it's a, something that my students and I have discussed for a long time on how can we honor um, veterans in Acton and Boxborough and we've talked about it but never really pulled the trigger on getting something done. And I had a conversation with kind of an Acton legend, his name is Buddy Flannery, he's um, um, a member of the Rotary Club and he suggested that we pair the Rotary Club with kids in the school um, to see if we couldn't pull something off. And uh, we pulled it together last year. It was it's fascinating. We thought we were going to have about 200 veterans in Acton and that maybe 50 would show up and it'd be a small affair in the, in the cafeteria where the kids would bring food and serve. And turns out we have over 900 veterans in Acton and Boxborough. Um, so the event kind of took on a, a different specter when we realized how many people we were talking about. Last year, over 200 veterans and their families showed up for breakfast. 100 students showed up to serve. It was, it was phenomenal. The, um, the Madrigals came and sang. Um, the, we had a speaker. It just was a remarkable event. This is the second year. How will this year be different from last year? Well, last year we really didn't know what we were getting into. And, and when we realized the numbers we were dealing with, we had to kind of scramble to raise funds. Fortunately, the Rotary Club helped up with, with some funding, stepped up with some funding, and the Holiday Inn in Boxborough came forward and offered to help subsidize some of the meals and the hot food, which, which ended up being kind of a key linchpin in the whole operation. Um, but the word of mouth kind of took off, and the event kind of took on a life of its own, and we're expecting even more um, participation and more veterans to come this year because we've got so much positive feedback from the event. So we've had to take our fundraising to a new level. Last year, the National Honor Society kids went to different businesses in the community asking for them to support a table of 10 veterans, um, about $5 a plate, $50 for a table, and we probably had 20 businesses in the community. Um, expecting more numbers, we've had to kind of kick up our fundraising efforts and we've, we've reached out to all those 50 businesses in the community and we're also this year asking families in the Acton and Boxborough community to step up and be willing to sponsor a table. What role do the kids play in the event? Oh, they've been phenomenal, particularly the leadership on the National Honor Society. Clavia Taktani, Nick Lebeau and Dan Gachevsny have just gone above and beyond in their efforts to do the fundraising. Um, in some ways, they've single-handedly done a lot of the fundraising on their own. Um, they have gone from the business to business seeking donations. They've stood at football games with cans, finding money, uh, raising money. Um, they will be in charge of mailing out the invitation. And then we open it up to the whole student body. It's, it's run by the National Honor Society, but we encourage all students at all levels who are interested to come and participate. You can sign up on my door at 212 East um, to bring food. Uh, we ask kids to sign up for either juice, fruit salad, or to bring muffins. They can sign up to help stuff invitations. And then you come, you come dress nicely, and I, I tell kids they need to come dress like they're going to dinner with their grandparents. And uh, come help serve the breakfast. Um, there wasn't a student last year that didn't find it one of the most rewarding things they were a part of. Mrs. Maddox and her students are still looking for families or businesses who would like to sponsor a table of 10 veterans for only $50. If you're interested in sponsoring a table, please email Mary Price Maddox at Acton Boxborough High School. On the next AB to Z, we'll have highlights and interviews from the Veterans Day Breakfast. The first career speaker event took place on Wednesday, October 15th, during first period. This was the first three of three career speaker events hosted by the counseling department. There were 11 different speakers who presented at the event and interested students chose one presentation 
to attend. Highlights from this event will be shown on the next AV to Z. Are you a fan of rom-coms? Now what the heck is that? A romantic comedy. Oh, okay. Come to the ABR Jess Perseum Circus's Fall Play, 1930s drama, You Can't Take It With You. The play is about a quirky sycamore family and their youngest child who falls in love with a Wall Street broker. With Eleanor Tully taking the lead role, Proscenium Circus looks primed to give yet another stellar performance. The play opens on Thursday, October 30th at 7.30 p.m. Other performances are November 1st, 7th, and 8th at 7.30 p.m. and November 2nd and 8th at 3 o'clock p.m. Tickets cost $14 for an evening and $12 for matinee and are available for purchase at the Roach Brothers Market in Acton, Red Wine and Brew, and M mktix.com. For more information, visit www.abdrama.org. Do you like to travel and help others? Oh yeah, I do. Then on July 2015, in July 2015, ABRHS will partner with the World Challenge for a two-week trip to Nicaragua. All high school students are invited to attend. In the past, World Challenge and AB have organized trips to South Africa, Thailand, India, and Ecuador. Come to Nicaragua in the summer of 2015 to have the opportunity to help local communities, trek volcanoes, and enjoy the Pacific Coast setting. Like always, please don't hesitate to contact Michael Chorba or Emily Fishkin for more information. See you in Nicaragua. A regular feature on AB to Z is our community profile, where we interview, introduce an interesting or unique person from Acton or Boxborough. Tonight, we introduce you to a former AB student and now professional filmmaker, class of 25, 20, 2005 graduate Lauren Tracy. Lauren Tracy isn't just unique because of her filmmaking, but what is even more extraordinary is how she wants to make a difference by blazing a trail for future female filmmakers. Here with this community profile is Haley Ryerson and Angela Petrozino. Hollywood's flashing lights and glamorous stars give the movie industry a flawless beauty that often goes unchallenged by the millions who watch movies and even by those who make movies themselves. Aspiring filmmaker and entrepreneur Lauren Tracy saw through Hollywood's glamour and found a major problem in the film industry, one that often goes unnoticed. Lauren recognized how hard it was being a female in the male-dominated industry, and instead of just ignoring it like many others do, Lauren Tracy created her own company, X Factor Filmmakers, to try and fix that problem and the other major problems in the film industry. During an interview, Lauren tells us why she was inspired to create her own film company. When I was in college, when we started it, it was an organization that supported women in film and we're trying to sort of figure out why there are so few female filmmakers in Hollywood and then what we could do to help those like me who are also trying to make films. Lauren originally became interested in solving the problems in the film industry in college. She told us about what her company was like when she first started it. So that was more of a nonprofit, even though we weren't a legal nonprofit. We were a branch of my dad's company actually um, as we were trying to figure out what to do with it. Since college, the goal of X Factor Filmmakers has changed to try and better fix the problems that Lauren wants to address as well as advancing Lauren's career as a writer and director. Lauren tells us about the new version of our company. And then when I went to LA we decided that's not the direction we want to go. We definitely want to make films, we want to make feature films, but we want to keep this female aspect. The goals of the company are not the only thing that have changed. The focus of the company has broadened from focusing only on women in the film industry to focusing on all aspiring writers and directors. During the interview, Lauren gave us a quick summary of the problems she was trying to address with her company. The problem that I'm trying to solve with the company is essentially that when you make a film, an independent film, it's really expensive. <laughs> and it takes a really long time. And it takes a long time to build an audience. And generally what happens is a filmmaker will make a first feature film, let's say, and the majority of those filmmakers don't make a second film. Even though Lauren's company has been around in different forms since college, when asked about when her company was created, Lauren replies, X Factor Filmmakers has been in existence in different ways since late 2008, but if you ask me, you know, when I am 40, when I started my production company or my film studio, I would say 
now. Lauren Tracy's film company is growing and doing its best to help out aspiring female filmmakers. Although her company is still in its startup phase, Lauren has been involved in film since a young age. Lauren's father was very influential in her decision to pursue a career in film. He started his own graphic design company and introduced Lauren into both the business and artistic world. During the interview, Lauren told us more about her dad's influence. So from an early age, I was always going to the movies with him, and he would always include me in his work, basically. He would ask me my opinion at a really young age about, you know, logos of companies I shouldn't have, you know, had any business saying anything about. Lauren was very involved in soccer, as well as arts like drawing and painting, during her time at Acton Boxborough. She was not quite sure what she wanted to major in until her junior year. But I started watching a lot of special features, and I just thought I was interested in this thing, but I didn't necessarily think of it as a career. And my dad was actually the one that told me, well, you can do this. And I said, yeah, you're right, that's cool. So then when I was 16, I uh, started taking film classes at AB. Once she realized her passion for film, she started taking classes at AB. One class she took was Mr. Kilpatrick's Intro to Film class. We asked Mr. Kilpatrick if he could tell Lauren was going to go into film from her work in his class. Clearly she was one of my better students. She had a genuine interest and passion for it. You know, I knew that she was going to college to study communications. Um, so it, it was something that, it was a direction she was definitely interested in looking into. In addition to taking film classes, Lauren also took drawing and painting for three years. We talked to her art teacher, Liz Mackay, about Lauren's strengths in her class. Um, she gets inspired easily um, by a lot of things, but I think it, it, her passion really comes from inside. It's, you know, her heart and soul and where she is. For the final project in her art class, Lauren showed her love of film and soccer by creating a short film about a girl going off to college and being scared to leave her soccer ball behind. Luckily for Lauren, high school was not the end of her soccer career or her film career. Just as Lauren showed skill in the soccer field, she showed many skills in both her art and film classes that allowed her to be successful and continue her passion of film as a career. Rick Kilpatrick tells us the skills she exhibited in his class. Uh, she was uh, conscientious, she was responsible, um, easy to work with, very positive person, always had a smile on her face. So yeah. Her wide skill set allowed Lauren to excel during her time at Rochester Institute of Technology. She made many short films at RIT, including a documentary called George, about George Eastman, the man who created Kodak, right near RIT in Rochester, New York. Lauren tells us more about this piece. And that film was called George, and it was basically a study of his life and death. He had like an incredible life where he created this company and changed the world in terms of photography and film and he ended up actually committing suicide. Lauren also made many other films during her time at RIT including Faith, a story about a love triangle and choosing who to be loyal to. She finished off college with one last film, The Lesson. Um, kids in a classroom and another sort of lust love thing where this kid likes this girl and they start passing notes and the whole class tries to get him to talk to her by passing notes while this teacher is teaching like behind her back. Book. Graphy. Right. To write about. Lauren is not much of a city person so while living in Los Angeles she used to visit the desert to relax and write. On one such trip to the desert she came up with the idea for her feature film, Sweet Desert Palm. And we came across this oasis of palm trees in the middle of the desert. And I just thought that was so cool and sort of imagined what it would be like to grow up in that environment instead of here. So the script for Sweet Desert Palm is finished, and Lauren and her company, X Factor Filmmakers, have moved on to the next stage in production. And right now we're looking for investment, so that's really our next big step. So we have the script and we're starting to build traction online for both the audience for the company and the movie. And now we're saying, all right, we need some money to actually make this thing happen. Los niños que mantienen secretos son castigados. Lauren gave three presentations around acting to promote both her new film and her growing company and to inspire a love of film in the next generation. In sports, the AB football team is 2-2 two and two overall and 2-1 and one in the DCL. In the coming weeks, the stakes get bigger as the Colonials have matchups 
with powerhouse Chelmsford and league rival Lincoln Sudbury. Varsity players Jack Maddox and Liam Murray talked more about the season. Uh, hopefully our team can win the DCL. We have the big game against LS coming in about two weeks, and hopefully we can win that and go, well, uh, go deep in the playoffs. Uh, so far, it's been a bit disappointing. We've lost a couple close games that we could have won. Um, we could have been definitely in the driver's seat of the, of the DCL, uh, but now um, we, um, we aren't as successful as we have been, and it, it's going to be a tough road ahead of us if we want to achieve our goals. Annual AB Field Hockey's Play for the Cure event is just days away. This event is held to raise money and awareness for the fight against breast cancer. Over the past four years, in excess of $7,900 have been raised. Hopefully this will be the year the team can pass the $10,000 mark. This event is sponsored by Roach Brothers, Dunkin' Donuts, Soccer Stuff, and Ann Lockery. Ways you can help out, aside from of course attending the game, is buying pink apparel at one of the games or donating a cash or check to Play for the Cure. Contact Kathy Griffin with any questions. Thank you for your support. And that does it for this premiere edition of AB to Z. We'll be back next week with another inside look at Acton and Boxborough. I'm Calvin Sullivan. And I'm Ben Murphy. Thank you everyone for watching. Welcome to this edition of AB to Z. My name is Chris. I'm Will. And I'm Bailey. Here's what's happening around your AB community. It is October, and that means the fall play is just around the corner. This year, the AB RHS's Presidium Circus will present you, You Can't Take It With You. You can visit abdrama.org to request the tickets for this heartwarming romantic comedy. Show dates at 7.30 p.m. are October 30th and November 1st, 7th, and 8th. Then, on November 2nd and 8th, the show is at 3 p.m. Tickets will be held at the ticket table until 15 minutes before the curtain. We hope to see you there. Speaking of the fall play, one of Acton's best restaurants, Not Your Average Joe's, is teaming up with the Proscenium Circus to hold a fundraiser. Every Tuesday in October, Not Your Average Joe's will donate a percentage of your dining total to the Proscenium Circus. All you have to do is present the online certificate to your server and the Proscenium Circus will receive 15% of your total purchase. On November 4th, the junior class will be participating in a community service project helping senior citizens by volunteering to rake some yards. Teachers and staff will be participating in Professional Learning Day, while the other students not participating will have the day off. Juniors that want to join in this annual activity will receive the info via email and Facebook message on how to sign up. Shoeboxrecycling.com and the Acton Boxboro Girls Volleyball Team are joining forces to collect, gen to collect gently used pairs of shoes. All shoes except flip-flops, crocs, slippers, and shoes with holes are accepted. Shoes can be dropped off in a box in the lobbies of the high school, junior high, Conan School, and the Acton Memorial Library through October 31st. 
Please support this important green initiative and the volleyball team. Recently, recent, recently the Counseling Center held a career speakers event. Recently, the Counseling Center held a career speakers event during period one. Local adults from various professions came in and made presentations about their jobs and then answered questions from students. We spoke to Student Affairs Representative Melissa Dempsey about how the day went. Your speaker event go this year. It went really well. It was this morning. We had about 300 kids sign up and we had 10 different speakers from all different fields come in and talk to the kids. Were there any new speakers that came this time from last time? We had a few. We had um, a parent come in and talk about the pharmaceutical industry. We had another parent come in and talk about entrepreneurial businesses. Uh, so we had a few. A regular feature on AB to Z is our community profile segment. Where we profile a local community member with a unique or interesting job, interest, or hobby. On today's show, AB to Z reporter Liam Murray introduced us to the Oblendo brothers, twin brothers and the owners of the popular Twin Seafoods in West Acton. What started out as a small business in Concord has turned into two successful restaurants, each with their own unique differences. We sat down with Joe and John Leblundo, twin brothers and owner of Twin Seafoods in Acton and Concord, to talk about what it's like working with each other and owning a small business. We, we both have the same, same uh, focus for the business and where we'd like to take the business. So, you know, ultimately we have the same goal. I mean, you know, day to day, sometimes we have some uh, little bit of scuffles, but it hasn't come to uh, fisticuffs yet, but you never know. Our bonds are tight, so you know we can yell at we can yell at each other and scream at each other, and then the next day be totally fine. Twin seafood is successful now, but that hasn't always been the case with the Labundo brothers. And uh, Joe got laid off, and we both kind of laid off at the same time, and we were like, let's let's start our own business so we can kind of keep our uh, our futures in our own hands. I so worked down at Fresh Pond Seafood. Um, in Cambridge. I started there back in 1978 and uh, so I worked there for 12 years and um, in 1990 I left there and later that year that same year in 1990 we bought a house in Concord. You know we didn't we didn't eat a lot of fishes than when we were growing up when we were kids um, so it was more pasta and things like that because fish you know fishes has always been fairly expensive. Despite its high cost, Twin Seafood buys all its fish locally from various vendors in Boston. One of the places we work with is Boston Sword and Tuna. So we get our, we get our tuna, we get our swordfish, we get some other fish from them. The focus of Twin has always been to sell the highest quality seafood to its customers. But many things about the restaurant have changed in the past 20 years. Back, in, back when we first opened, first of all, we didn't have takeout. You know, so we just had a fresh, fresh, uh, fresh fish market. It's just the way of the world. Everybody's so busy. You know, two, two parents both working full time. Oh, there's a lot more need to come to a place like Twin Seafood, grab food, bring it home to your family. So Throughout the changes of Twin Seafood. The brother's relationship has remained strong and according to them, they work well together. I would say he's better front of the house and I'm better in the, like, the back of the house where the back of the house is like kitchen, prep and all that stuff. Uh, Joe's better when he's dealing with the customers and stuff like that. So, However, Joe seems to prefer working from a separate store than his brother. It was fine when we worked together but it's better that we have two stores and we're able to each have our own ideas and things like that and we can run each store the way that each one of us sees fit. The brothers do share one key philosophy. You really, you really need to be locked in on customer service and their needs and what they want. The people get what they want. Basically we'll do basically anything that the customer asks us to do as long as it's legal. You could have the best food, you could have the best alcohol, you could have the best of everything and if nobody walks through the door you're out of business. The brothers then talked openly about their experience on Acton TV with their creatively named show, The Codfather. The Codfather, where we kind of tie it into The Godfather. And um, I think it's good. I mean, it, it, it's a, and the guys down there are great. We didn't, we didn't know what, what to call it. And myself, my wife, Louise, and uh, my two kids, Eric and, and Alex, we were up in Maine. And we were walking to the beach. 
and there was this house that had a, a ship wheel on it and on the ship wheel it said Codfather. We cook dishes that we serve here. We also do more extensive stuff like, um, you know, we may do some um, swordfish kebabs or we may do a seafood lasagna. Uh, I don't think we have, you know, thousands of viewers, but I bet you we have hundreds of viewers. I don't have issues with that at all. I think it's great. We then sat down with Eric Obwondo, son of Joe and twin seafood employee, to ask him whether he liked working for his dad and whether he could see Twin Seafood becoming Eric Leblondo Seafood in the near future. Um, I don't really work when he's there, but it's pretty cool having your dad as a boss because it's not as strict. But he seems skeptical about taking over the business. Um, I don't know, maybe. Depends how college goes, I guess. Brothers still have plans for the future. We asked them if they had um, any expansion in mind. I don't for know. I mean, food. I would love to. Right now, where my kids are still home, and Johnny still has his daughter at home, um, you know, this is these two stores are enough. But you know, maybe I don't know when when the kids go off to college, they maybe uh, maybe we may want to do a like a full fledged restaurant with beer and wine bar, something like that. But. Uh, but who knows, right now this is, this is plenty for us. Regardless of where the restaurant goes, the brothers have already established themselves in Acton restaurant business and in Acton culture. Thanks for that story, Liam. So Bailey, what's your favorite dish at Twin Seafood? Well, I really love the uh, swordfish I get every time and it's delicious. Did you know they make a burger with clam chowder on it? Well, that does it for this segment of A, B, Z. It's... <laughs> uh, I'm Will Otero. And I'm Chris Arsenault. Be sure to tune in next week for another edition of the longest running show on Acton TV. And I'm Bailey Hurley. Thanks for watching, everyone.